this is Rob uh, Lavol, uh, and uh, he's been working with a group, uh, a local group in Kenya, uh, and uh, they have developed a, a ruthlessly affordable. I'm reading from his question and viable. Uh, business of clean, efficient biochar generating cookstoves, which produce uh, biomass fuel briquettes and a biochar fortified fertilizer. So, uh, um, Rob describes what they're doing. They've got a cookstove and they hope to sell large numbers of the cookstove um, in Kenya, and uh, they also hope to sell biochar. Uh, as a soil amendment uh, uh, product that uh, is the end result of using the cook stove. So, uh, two or three things uh, about the, the, the uh, cook stoves. And these are in the form of questions that are critical in my experience to the success of any project. The first question is, how much is a cook stove? I don't see that in your literature. But that's critical. Uh, to me, the sweet spot in the market, in the mass market for cook stoves, there are many different cook stoves available, is about $15. If your cook stove is $50, uh, that's going to be tough to get to big scale. If it's $100, it'll be virtually impossible, but it'll be very attractive to middle class and, and uh, uh, more uh, wealthy families. Uh, then, uh, Let's say that the cook stove is affordably priced. Then the next step, and these are fairly routine uh, steps. Um, have you developed a uh, an aspirational branding strategy? Aspirational branding is as just as important or more important with uh, poor customers as it is uh, with uh, rich customers. So that would mean that, that would include uh, coming up with a, an attractive name for the stove. And branding is uh, not uh, selling ice to Eskimos. It in, it, it's involved with everything that everybody in your organization making these uh, stoves says and does and how they're perceived in the village and uh, whether the cook stoves are reliable uh, and whether they cook well with uh, with the specific cooking uh, 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 foods that are cooked in a certain way in each uh, in each culture. Uh, so then uh, you need a scaling strategy and a last mile distribution strategy. Now when we come to biochar, there's a great deal of interest in biochar as a soil amendment uh, material. Uh, my view is that it, we need much more research to know for which, which crops and what soils it's most useful. But be that as it may, the question is how much of a market demand is there for biochar? And uh, my uh, quick look at that field uh, indicates that uh, while it has tremendous promise, there isn't a huge market yet uh, sufficient to bring it to us to the kind of scale I'm talking about. Uh, in comparison, there's a, about a 12.5 billion global market for charcoal right now. Charcoal is a terrible product for the environment. It uh, usually releases a huge amount of carbon emissions uh, in its preparation, and if it's not burned efficiently, it, it releases some more. But the reality is that that's a 12.5 billion dollar market. I don't know what the market size is for biochar right now as a soil amendment, but I think it's fairly limited. So that's one of the uh, uh, key challenges uh, that you face. I hope that's useful to you, uh, Rob, and good luck with your project. Um, I hope it's okay with you that I'm moving fairly quickly uh, because this allows us to get to uh, a wide variety of questions. Um, I guess uh, uh, the Jackie Wu couldn't make it to the Hangout uh, because of connectivity issues, but here's her general question. Okay, uh, Jackie Wu's question is.